Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. Today I'm going to be installing a hydraulic ram pump. What is a ram pump? It's a water pump that does not need fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing falling water. Essentially, water is going to come down a pipe, activate this waste valve, which will send water into a secondary valve, build pressure in the tank, and send water uphill. So, this is the first half of a two-part series where I'm going to be bringing water from the creek up to a tiny house to give pressurized hot water. So, let's go ahead and get to work installing this ram pump. The first thing I want to do is head to the source water and put in the source intake. The water source that I want to utilize is this pool that comes out of the culvert. The reason I want to use this is because it's nice and deep and I won't have to worry about too much debris getting into the intake. So for the intake, I have got a piece of two inch PVC pipe and it has lots and lots of little holes drilled into it. Now normally I would fill this up all the way and then put some window screen over it. However, I did not have a window screen with me. So what I'm gonna do is put this in the water and then on the back side, it has a half inch threaded uh, bushing and that's where my supply pipe will take water from the source downstream. But before, us, before I put this in, let's go ahead and glue together the supply pipe. The supply pipe is simply half inch PVC. Each section is 20 foot long. I'm just going to take some of this PVC cement, wrap it all along here, and then get this pipe connected. All right. I'm gonna give each of these connections about 20 minutes or so to set up. I now have my supply pipe totally glued together. It's about 140 foot long. Now it's time to attach the intake to the supply pipe. So I'm going to simply, I'm gonna simply connect this by threading this on here. Typically this area of the creek doesn't have much flooding. So what I want to do is make sure that my intake is all the way in the water but I'm gonna place a rock underneath here to hopefully help prevent some of the silt from getting in there. That one, that. And then I'm gonna take a bigger rock and place it on the intake to keep it in place. All right, you can see what the intake looks like. It's resting on those rocks. Those holes are exposed towards the top and that rock right there is holding it in place. The next step is to make sure that the supply pipe is following the creek and is mostly uh, flat so it doesn't have any uh, raises to have air pockets so let's do that real quick places like this right here i'm simply going to move over to allow it to be more in the creek so it's uh, a bit lower to the ground now that i have my supply pipe finished i'm going to install a stand pipe this is gonna be a piece of PVC pipe that stands up on a T, and it's going to be a little taller than the source water. And essentially what's gonna happen is the ram pump is gonna use this stand pipe as the source, and the pipe that's going up to the actual source will just be bringing water to the stand pipe. It uh, basically allows the ram pump to cycle more quickly without having to send the pressure wave all the way back up the supply pipe. So, what I've got here is a PVC T. I'm just going to thread on to the end of this pipe. And that is going to stick up and allow me to put this stand pipe in there. And now the remaining pipe is considered the drive pipe. And that's what's going to drive the water into the ram pump. So this one needs to have pressure behind it. And so I'm gonna put uh, Teflon tape on. The supply pipe comes down the creek, as you can see, goes to this T, and that's where the stand pipe is now resting. And then every pipe that continues down further is considered the drive pipe. And so it's time to connect the ram pump to the end of the drive pipe. Now, I've got some threads down here because I may want to extend this another uh, 20 or 30 feet down there. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and get the pump connected. So what I want to do is disconnect this ball valve over here so that I can get it threaded to the ram pump drive pipe. 
I also like to put my ram pump on a decking board or some other kind of board to keep it upright. And I will also do that here in just a moment as well, but just want to make sure I have sufficient head pressure at this current level to work with. In order to prime or fill up the drive pipe, I'm going to use something called a drill pump. And that's a little pump that connects to a drill and it forces water from the creek up into the pipe. So it's going to save so much effort trying to get that drive pipe primed and started. So what I want to do is use a piece of garden hose with some uh, threads here. And I'm going to insert this into the waste valve of the ram pump. Oh, so many mosquitoes. Oh, I'm getting sucked dry over here. Okay. All right. All right, now that I have that connection done, I'm going to connect my drill down here. I'm gonna get a little bit of water in the pipe first to prime the pump. All right, let's see if that's enough to get that pipe full. Disconnect the drill. I'm gonna disconnect the pump real quick because there may be some debris still in here. Let's see what happens. Hopefully there won't be any air stuck in this pipe. Let's let it uh, sit here for a moment and uh, just flow forth. After a couple minutes, it seems as though all of the air is out of the pipe. I'm going to connect the pump again and see if we have enough head pressure. Oh, mosquitoes everywhere. Let's connect the pump and see if we have enough pressure to drive this. The ram pump needs right at three feet of drop minimum in order to operate the pump. So let's give this a try and see what we get. All right, in order to test this, I have the delivery pipe side closed and the drive pipe side open. So let's see if I cycle this a few times. Now I can tell that's a little bit slow, which means I need more input head pressure. So I'm gonna add an additional 40 feet of drive pipe and we should get enough drop to get this really going well. But just for demonstration purposes, let me show you how much pressure is coming out the back side of this after it's been cycling for a bit. All right, there we go. Be sure to tune in for part two of this two-part series where I take the ram pump water and I fill an IBC tote on the top of this hill and then bring water down to this tiny house in order to get inside water for showers and washing stuff. So I'm gonna use a, a diaphragm pump to pressurize the water, a house filter to somewhat clean the water, not to the point of drinking, but at least to be able to clean uh, like in a shower. And then I have a hot water heater that will be able to warm the water for the shower. So stay tuned for that video coming up next. I added an additional 60 feet of supply pipe and there is the new stand pipe location. And now we've got the pump down here at this new location. So the total input head pressure is right at five feet, and I think that's gonna be sufficient to get us where we need to be. So to get the water up the hill, I am using a half inch poly pipe, and this is a delivery pipe. So I need to attach it right here to the end of the pump. And to do that, I'm going to be using uh, this little adapter right here. Now, sadly, my camera stopped uh, working, so Let's go ahead and do this with a cell phone. I now have the delivery pipe connected over here on this side of the pump, and I've got the delivery ball valve closed, and I've got the drive pipe open. So let's see if we can get an example of how this pump works here. All right, so it's gonna start cycling on its own. As you can see, the uh, closure is a lot stronger than before, and that is a good thing. All right, so as soon as I open up the delivery pipe, the whole system is going to stop. Water was just pressed into the delivery pipe, pressure was lost here, and the system stopped. So what's happening now is water is going to come down the drive pipe. It's going to go up the delivery pipe and match the head pressure. And uh, what I'm going to do now is get back out that drill pump. I'm going to close the drive pipe place the drill pump here on the valve, turn it on, and send water 
uphill this way to fill up that delivery pipe. Now, if you don't have a drill pump, you can do this the hard way, and that is to manually cycle this probably a hundred times or more, and that will fill up that line very slowly. Using the drill pump, I sent a good bit of water up the hill. Let's see if it's enough to maintain back pressure. Looks like we're pretty close here. All right, the pump seems to be working on its own, which means we need to head up the hill following the delivery pipe and see how far up the hill that water has gotten. Well, we may not be quite there yet. It's stopping every uh, now and then. A little bit of air in the pipe. When you follow the delivery pipe uphill, you can tap on it. So that is full right there. You move up further. Let's see what we got here. All right. You can tell that right there does not have water yet. So somewhere between there and there. All right, that's got water in it. No water there yet. So it's right here, right there. So with every cycle, it's putting an inch or two of water up here. And we're gonna go all the way up to the top of this hill so that we can get water to an IBC tote. The water has reached the top of the delivery pipe. You can see that it is flowing. It's not a lot of water, which means I may want to increase the input head pressure by one or maybe even two feet to get more water. But I'm gonna go ahead and attach another section of pipe because we still have to get right up there to that fence. So another 10 foot of lift or so. Now to do this, I've got an adapter because I didn't have any more of the half inch pipe. And so I'm simply going to just place this in the end down here and then step up to some three quarter. It doesn't matter what size you use on the delivery pipe. While the pump continues to cycle, pushing water uphill, Let's do a full tour of the system before we close out this video. Let's start here at the very beginning where the water source is. There's our two inch pipe with lots of holes bringing water into the system, as you can see there. And then our half inch supply pipe, which comes out of there. And let's follow this down the creek real quick. You can see that I, for the most part, have everything locked down pretty low. As long as there is suction coming out the bottom end, it doesn't have to be totally uh, submerged here. So for instance, there's a little spot right there that could be pushed down, but in total we have about five feet of input head pressure and that is enough to get water to the top of my hill up here because the ram pump operates on a one to seven ratio. For every one foot of head pressure going into the pump, it will lift seven feet out. A sharp turn here but because the drive pipe isn't in this section it's okay to have that sharp turn because the stand pipe up here will uh, allow the pump to cycle without that bend being considered so here we have the stand pipe which is about six foot tall and our input head pressure is about five foot so we've got plenty of room there you kind of see that jumping around. All right, move down here. And here is our pump continuing to cycle. Now I am likely to put a board up under the pump for better support, but for now, I think that's gonna be good enough. The delivery pipe is gonna be hard to follow. So I'm just going to move around to the top here. There's a barbed wire fence I'd have to go through, but essentially that just goes up the hill here, way up there to the top, which probably is pushing the maximum lift of this uh, five feet of input head pressure. The delivery pipe is traveling up the hill right here. This is where I convert from half inch to three quarter. And if I move up here, this is full, which is good news. So let's move up here to the very top of the fence and see what we get. The ram pump has pushed water all the way up the hill. It is 
going over that little uprise in the fence and I can feel it down here but this pipe is full it's got to about right there and it's filling up so I believe we are good to go on the height here for the ram pump <laughs> well I believe that concludes this video of installing the half inch ram pump it's hot out here and there are mosquitoes everywhere now, in the second half of this series, I'm going to be installing an IBC tote, a 55-gallon drum, a diaphragm pump to pressurize water, a house filter to clean the water, and a hot water heater to have showers and such into a tiny house. So be sure to stick around for the second half of this video series. I have four different sizes of ram pump available in the description down below. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. All right, time to get out of the mosquito land and drink some water.